High school football is sprinting to the finish line with just four Friday nights left in the regular season. And for the first time this season, we will mention the word playoffs. I'm Leland Barclay, and this is the River Valley Sports Report, sponsored by Ashley Air, a local supporter of this report, and River Valley Sports, Schools, and Athletes. I was at Mayo Thompson Stadium on Friday where Northside held off Jonesboro for a 36-28 win, which improved the Grizzlies to 3-3 overall and 2-1 in the 7A Central in the first meeting between the two schools since 1964. It was an unusual start to the game for the Grizzlies with starting quarterback Poom Savoy hurting his arm in pregame warmups and forcing sophomore McLean Moody into his first varsity start. But he got it Northside to a quick 20-7 lead. That included a 57-yard catch and run by Takavion King but it also took defense and special teams for the Grizzlies to hold on to the win, with Tavarius King recovering a fumbled punt by Jonesboro that led to a touchdown. Also late in the game, senior linebacker Julius Thomas disrupted a handoff exchange in Jonesboro's backfield that forced a fumble with 2.17 left that led to a 23-yard field goal by Cesar Perez. We talked to Thomas about the team's defensive effort and the fumble that he forced. The, the second half, you guys uh, really had to bowl up on defense, didn't you? Yes, sir. It was um, that first half, we played a good game, but we knew we had to come harder, you feel me? So we came back out and we executed the defense like we needed to. They got some couple scores, but good thing we fixed it and executed the defense like we needed to. You had that big forced fumble. Uh, what did you see on that play? Uh, I just seen go back there and hit somebody. I was trying to get the ball, but hey, my teammate got it. That's great too. Uh, and then you also had the stop on the two point uh, uh, try. What what did you see on that? Take me through that play. Uh, on that play, it was the running back was on my side, so I knew either way I had the cue, and my other man did his job, the other outside linebacker. So we just perfect defense. Late in the game with Jonesboro within 33-28 and Moody having been knocked out of the game after successive sacks to end the third quarter, Savoy talked Northside head coach Felix Curry into putting him into the game and Savoy guided the Grizzlies to the field goal. He had 35 yards rushing on that last drive including first down runs of 18 and 11 yards. Savoy had this to say after the game me through, of course, I know you kind of hurt your arm pre-game warm-up, came out without your uh, pads on and the helmet. Tell me the conversation with uh, Coach Curry late in the game when you came in. Um, before the game, I told Coach Curry, like, second half, I'm, I'm going to bring my shoulder pads out. Like, so I'm going to have them there just in case we need it. And it was the end of the game, and it was something I felt like I can get through, so I just went ahead and did it. Uh, of course, that big, the 18-yard run for the first down, that was a big play. What did you kind of see on that? Did you just kind of want to lift your team up and, uh, you know, carry them? Oh, uh, yes, sir. I, it wasn't really me. I was just there to help. I mean, without them guys, I ain't going to get no much farther. I was just there to help. And, of course, we talked to Coach Curry about the unusual. We knew we were going to have to play for four quarters. That, that club is a, they're a great team, and we knew we couldn't win with, with 20 points. We knew it was going to go further. They played, they played their butts off, man. Uh, if, as you can see, they're big up front, and they're physical. The running backs, the quarterbacks, they're physical, and, and we had to step it up. We grew up a little bit. That's right, that's right. And that, we tell them all the time, you don't know where that play is going to be. That's going to kind of change the tempo of the game. Be ready to make it every play, and we had different ones to make it. Uh, well, you had to. Uh, but tell me about Pooch Boy. What was his? Uh, man, we, he's out here warming up like regular. They, I get a text, and man, Poon did something to his arm. I'm thinking a little, you know, tweak. Well, I come, and he's... You know, holding it down like is really in pain. But as the night went on, he started moving a little bit. And right before the game, he said, Coach, 
I'm going to be ready if you need me. And I, you know, I told him, man, we may. But um, he, he, you know he's a trooper. He's a trooper that came in. And right now, he couldn't throw the ball, so he wanted to run it. There were lots of other headlines in Saturday's Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Walter Woody was in Charleston where the Tigers remained undefeated in the 3A1 with a 42-7 win over Mansfield. Charleston's defense was outstanding, allowing just 143 yards and seven first downs. Harold McIlvain was in Alma where the Airedales returned to the win column after a 45-7 win over Pea Ridge. Alma's defense was also outstanding. Jaden Mayer and Caden Minshall had turnovers that allowed the defense to put 14 points up on the scoreboard. Ethan Westerman covered Fayetteville's 60-20 win over Southside with the Purple Dogs returning a pair of interceptions for touchdowns in the homecoming win at Reynolds Razorback Stadium. There are a lot of other big games on Friday. Ozark romped past Lincoln 64-21 behind the running of Eli Massingale who had 162 yards on just 11 carries with four touchdowns. Kobe Wilbanks, Hayden Medlock, and MJ Parker all had interceptions in the game to keep Lincoln's air attack grounded. That win set up a big game at Ozark on Friday when the Hillbillies will host Gentry in a game with huge playoff implications. Both teams are undefeated in the 4A1 conference. Harold will provide all the information for that game with Saturday's game story as well as an in-depth dive into the game in Sunday's River Valley Democrat Gazette. Of course, we'd be massively remiss if we didn't highlight the game of the week in Greenwood on Friday where the Bulldogs host undefeated Lake Hamilton in a matchup of top 10 ranked teams in the state. That game will also have big playoff implications. I will be there along with our super photographer, Hank Layton. He will be all over and around Smith Robinson Stadium, capturing much more than just the game action, so say hi to Hank on Friday. I will have the game story on Saturday and an in-depth look at the game in Sunday's River Valley Democrat Gazette, which is available at Come and Go, Casey's, Harps, and Walmart. You can't miss the River Valley Democrat Gazette Sunday edition. Uh, it's the big paper. Another big game is at Southside where Walter Woody will cover the Mavericks game against Rogers Heritage. The winner of that game will have an upper hand on a playoff berth as well. That's going to take us to halftime of the River Valley Sports Report. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsor, Ashley Air, with Gimme 5. The Martins came over, we were having spaghetti When we suddenly noticed that we started getting sweaty As the temperature approached 90 degrees My buddy said, man, you gotta call Ashley AshleyAir.com When your air conditioner breaks, they're the one you want AshleyAir.com They're fast and they're good and they got it going on The technician showed up the very same day Got it fixed right and fast, he was on his way When your air conditioner breaks, you know who to call There's only one choice AshleyAir.com these are the top five performances of the past week in the River Valley. Number one, the River Valley Player of the Week is Lavaca quarterback Maddox Noel, who led the Golden Arrows to a 31-7 win over West Fork with his usual all-around performance. Noel was 17 of 18, passing for 171 yards and two touchdowns, and rushed for 132 yards and two touchdowns to keep Lavaca undefeated at 6-0. Number two, Cedarville won its first 3A1 game when quarterback Lane Hightower hit Hayden Morton with a 28-yard touchdown pass with seven seconds left for an 18-12 win over Hackett. Jace Baker had 20 carries for 147 yards and a touchdown for the Pirates. Number three, Lamar bounced back from its first conference loss with a 36-21 win over Mayflower. Lee Harkreeder ran for 153 yards and two touchdowns, and Damian Hendricks ran for 113 yards and a score. Will Sanderson had 14 tackles to lead the defense. Number four, the Boonville Bearcats ran for four touchdowns in the first quarter and four more in the second quarter for a 55-14 halftime lead in a 55-21 win over Greenland. Dax Goff ran for 203 yards and four touchdowns. Trey Saul added 141 yards and two touchdowns, and Cody Elliott ran for 85 yards and two more touchdowns. 
Boone will rush for 445 yards in all. Number five, Ethan Vasquez returned the opening kickoff 86 yards for a touchdown and Magazine went on to a 23-14 win over Mountainburg. Owen Staten scored his first career touchdown with a 14-yard scoring reception from Nate Smith, who also ran for a late touchdown to secure the win. Check out every day of the Northwest Arkansas and River Valley Democrat Gazette where you will get Players of the Week, predictions, top performers, stats, schedules, scores, and capsules. Also, be sure and pick up every Sunday's River Valley Democrat Gazette and the four-page sports section. Weekly features of the sports section will be a feature story, wrap-ups from two selected games on Friday with the play of the game, player of the game, and an in-depth dive into those games and a small college notebook by Kevin Taylor. This week's feature was about Subiaco Academy's Adam Creek, who took an unusual path to becoming a head coach this season for the first time. Also, there are a lot of other things going on. The annual FCA Fields of Faith have begun. Van Buren will hold the next one on October the 19th, Charleston on November the 2nd. State tournaments in tennis are going on and Van Buren is holding their big cross-country meet on Saturday. You can subscribe online at nwaonline.com and click the subscribe button or by calling our customer service line at 479-684-5509. Be sure to follow the New River Valley Democrat Gazette Twitter accounts as well as mine, Walters, and Harold's. You can view and purchase photos from our award-winning Arkansas Democrat Gazette photographers that can be seen and purchased on our website, nwaonline.com photo. In an early nominee for photo of the year taken by River Valley photographer Hank Layden, here's Northside's Damari Smith with a catch on Friday night. We're going to wrap up this week's River Valley Sports Report with more photos from Northside on Friday night. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more updates like this. God bless you and we will see you next week.